back into the channel in today's video we're going to be going over a hard and fast way to get a good look at the draft class and what is available to you in case you don't want to put as much time into scouting and whatnot and you just want to come away with a solid draft class or you want to gauge the strengths and weaknesses of a draft class there are some surefire ways to do it. Now, I will warn you as I start this video, if you don't want to cheese in any way whatsoever, if you want to play ultra realistic, this is not really going to be a method for you. This is, in my opinion, an unrealistic method, of course, but I think that it is pretty valuable to building a team in franchise mode if you want to kind of put some effort into it but you either don't have a lot of luck with draft classes or you can't go into depth enough or maybe you don't have the skill to get great draft classes all the time this is a really good way to come away with a great draft class so let's say we're taking a look at our scouting on the season we can get a gauge of what all of these players are going to look like by doing a couple of things one, you can do this at any point in the season. I typically, if I'm going to be doing a quick rebuild with a team, I'm going to do this at around the time of the draft. I'm going to first go out and make a save for where I'm at in my file. And then I'm going to simulate to the draft. So I'm going to go ahead and save this franchise on April 7th because that's whenever we can really start scouting and whatnot. We're going to go ahead and put everything in the franchise on auto so that I can quick sim. The reason that we make that save is because we want to be able to go back to that save and use the information that we're going to gather to better inform our decisions in the scouting process. Now, you could simply make the save the day of or the day before the draft and go from there. You can ignore scouting all the way up until this point, and I guarantee you, you'll still come away with a great draft class because of these strategies that you can use. So I'm going to, again, hop into the draft then. And what we're going to do is take a look at who is actually drafted within the first round. And you can even do beyond the first round, but we're going to specifically take a look at who's drafted within the first round of the MLB draft and utilize that to inform our decisions whenever we come back to this save and do our actual draft of players within our franchise. And again, these strategies are all about gathering information, coming back to that save, and picking based off of the new information that we have available to us. It's not going to be super helpful for us to pay attention to all of those top-end draft picks, but it is going to be helpful for us to pay attention to the picks that are ahead of us. And now we can always go back to the round one results, and we can take a look. Specifically, what I would be looking at is the picks that are around where we're picking, maybe 25 through the next picks beyond that, and taking a look at the names, and I would be taking a picture of this. I'm gonna pull out my phone, and depending on where I'm drafting, I'm gonna take a picture of this screen, and I wanna know what players are getting drafted in the first round so that we can later go and gather information on those players. You can make a save here, or, you can just go based off of what we already have because we have a save made to be able to revert to. We're going to go into our calendar and we're just going to select any day and we're going to simulate the entire season. So we're going to skip everything. Anytime it asks you if you want to stop simming, just tell it no. You're not going to be accepting these results no matter what anyway. You just want to make sure that you skip all the way to the end of the season because we're going to see all of the draft prospects now on teams once we hit the offseason and we can actually gather information on what those prospects are realistically like. Now, what we're going to do is do a couple of searches to aid in our understanding of what that draft class actually had to offer. Number one, we will have noted the players that were drafted around us, and we are going to player search those players. We're going to type in their name specifically. All you have to do is type in their last name. If you want, you can specifically go by position, but we're just going to type in the you know five to ten prospects that were around us. We're going to get information on them, and we're going to be able to see what their 
overall was, what their potential was, what their ratings look like. And that gives us right off the bat a look at who we should ideally be drafting at that position. So like I said, we're going to be getting some unrealistic information here on these players. It is not a realistic strategy in the slightest, but I like having this capability because this is really the only way for you to get hard and fast information on these prospects if you're trying to do a quick franchise or something like that and make sure that you get good players. Now, you could always just draft whoever and then edit them after the fact. For some reason, I just find it to be more entertaining to actually just draft the players that are good in the draft class and mold them to my liking rather than going back and editing them after the fact that's a little bit more tedious in my opinion this is actually a pretty quick process then the next thing that we're going to do is sort by age what i'm going to do now is sort by 18 year olds and submit and everybody here that is an 18 year old pretty much is going to be a draft prospect. I mean, anybody else that was already on the roster will have been now moved up to 19 years old, so they're not gonna appear here. So now you can see all of the 18 year olds, what they come in overall wise. And you can of course click triangle on these players to see what their potential ratings are. You can see every bit of information you possibly could want to about these players and we now know which players to take a look at we very quickly are able to see who were the top players you know there's a couple of high overall guys with mid potential or low potential but then there's a couple of high overall guys that were 18 years old that had pretty good potential the other thing you can do is kind of make a note of some of the lower end players because again these players aren't all going to get drafted in the first round there aren't that many draft picks what we can also do is sort by potential. Let's say we wanted to note any A potentials that are 18 years old. This is your list of A potentials that are 18 years old. Likewise, we can find players that were drafted that were not necessarily 18 years old. So let's say we go up to 19 years old and just search 19 years old. And the way that you're going to know if they are a draft pick or an existing player within the roster is what league they're in so if they are a class a prospect they are nine times out of ten going to have been a draft picked player if they're higher than class a oftentimes they are a player that's already existing so you want to be able to distinguish between the players that you're actually looking for in the draft and the players that won't be available to you in the draft so again that's going to come in more as you increase in age so as you can see here a lot of these players are going to be AAA and so on, and so those are players that we know for a fact were not draft pick players. The other way to tell is when you click on them, they're going to have a bunch of pluses and minuses to their ratings. That only happens if they were already on a roster for that season. So we can take a look at Alfonso Rivera, however. This is a draft pick, whereas we can tell some of these other guys were not draft picks. So I would be looking at potentially Alfonso Rivera as a player to draft within this draft. I'd be looking at Ray Trujillo, those types of guys. And again, you can search by all types of things. The easiest way to do this, I mean, you can increase the age, you know, quite a bit. In my opinion, the easiest way to do this is just search, you know, one age at a time. So I like to search 18 year olds first because again, they're going to have the highest potential for you in the long run. So I like to search because they have the most, uh, the most to gain basically as players. And so you can kind of take a look at what's actually out there for you. There are so many A and B potential players here that it's going to be hard not to come away with at least a handful of them that are 18 years old that are going to progress really well for your organization. Again, it's going to be really difficult to miss on a draft class when you have this information. So you can go through, take a picture of some of these players, maybe mark down on a piece of paper or in a note on your phone, just you know what players are worth taking and when. And then the other thing that is worth noting is which players go undrafted. So I like to search by free agent, yes. And then I like to search by ages. If there's an 18 year old free agent, then more than likely that player was out there. Oftentimes you're gonna find guys here that were actually pretty solid in the draft. You're gonna sometimes find B and, and A potentials that weren't drafted that made it through to the free agency pool. This actually has happened to me quite a few times in franchise mode. It doesn't look like we have anybody here so far 
that was a draft prospect that snuck through with good potential, unfortunately. But a lot of times you will find guys out here in free agency. And then that lets you know that you can probably pick them with your sixth round pick. And so what I would suggest then is to go back to your previous save in franchise mode by pressing square on franchise mode and loading save file. And then either scout those players that you have noted, or in my personal opinion, if you're trying to be the quickest you can possibly be about it, go right back into the draft and try to draft as many of those players as possible. You can kind of quickly get an idea for what rounds those players are being selected and what rounds you'll be able to select the best draft class. Anyway, I hope that this information was helpful to you guys in some way. This can be really helpful if you're trying to go fast with drafting. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys do with draft classes. Do you take your time? Do you do it ultra realistic? Or do you do things like this just to make sure you get a good draft class? I'd love to hear it down in the comment section below, but leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. As always, I'll see you in the next video.